At the beginning of the miniseries, we meet a former astrophysicist named Milo Rodericks. He records a message from the ruin of a post-apocalyptic city, stating that he is the last person on Earth. The action shifts to the past, to the year 2016. The world is engulfed in wars, epidemics, and poverty. In New York, a young Milo, confined to a wheelchair, dreams of becoming a scientist. In Missouri, a farmer named Ricky Stormgren goes about his day. Suddenly, a massive spaceship inexplicably freezes in the sky and silently descends into a field. But this is just the beginning of mysterious events. Soon, cellular communication is interrupted worldwide, and gigantic alien spaceships appear over dozens of major cities. People look up at the sky in horror and brace for the worst. At the same time, all human-made aircraft descend to the ground, causing no destruction. Suddenly, shocked people begin to see their departed relatives through whom Corellan, supervisor of the Earth, communicates with them. The alien intelligence in human form announces that they came to eliminate wars, hunger, and inequality and to usher in the age of utopia. It will herald the arrival of the golden age of man. The arrivals, dubbed the overlords, don't intend to conquer Earth. They have come to help humanity build a perfect world. However, people view this incredible news with skepticism. Would you believe the aliens? Would you try to resist their influence or submit to their superior intellect? Share your thoughts in the comments. Ricky and his wife Ellie watched the news, reporting the miraculous resolution of all military conflicts on the planet. The residents of the town in Missouri are concerned about the invasion, but Ricky, one of the local leaders, reassures the people and suggests calmly observing the unfold events. In the evening, all the electrical appliances in Ricky and Ellie's house malfunction. Then the entire house starts shaking and the frightened couple, taking their dog, quickly retreats to the basement. Greenish light seeps through the cracks in the house, and soon an unknown force starts disassembling the house into its smallest components to reach Ricky. He steps out of the house and sees a massive alien drone. He agrees to go with the aliens but requests not to touch his family. Upon entering the alien spaceship, Ricky suddenly finds himself in a luxurious hotel room where he once spent a honeymoon with his late wife Annabelle. She passed away from cancer, and Ricky still struggles to cope with the loss, despite being in a new relationship. Suddenly, Corellan's voice fills the room, offering Ricky to be an intermediary between the overlords and humans. Ricky doesn't want to be a puppet of Corellan and doesn't understand why this mission was entrusted to him. However, Corellan insists and hands Ricky a mysterious object, without explaining his purpose. Learning about the alien's arrival in Missouri, reporters gather around Ricky's house. Government agent Paul Danlo also travels to Missouri to find out the details of Ricky's conversation with Corellan. Agent Danlo notices an alien artifact in Ricky's hands and demands he hand it over for safekeeping. Ricky refuses and Danlo threatens him with a weapon. By tricking the enigmatic vessel, Ricky manages to unlock it, and suddenly all diseases start disappearing worldwide. Soon, Ricky is taken to the White House, where he tells reporters about his negotiations with Corellan and the benefits of cooperating with him. However, many people still distrust the aliens. Media mogul Hugo Wainwright is convinced that the aliens are far more cunning than they seem and decides to fight them. Wainwright secretly organizes a countergroup the Freedom League, which strengthens the mistrust of millions towards the overlords. After some time, Ricky reports to Corellan again about the situation in the world, and informs him that the Freedom League is becoming more active. People worry that they are being led by individuals just like themselves, but Corellan claims that the aliens are nothing like humans. Meanwhile, one night, young Milo sets off to find his mother, who enjoys sniffing snow and is currently arguing with a dealer. Milo stands up for her, and the dealer shoots him. Suddenly, a beam of light appears from the sky, miraculously dealing with the criminal and resurrecting Milo. After this, the boy miraculously gets up from his wheelchair and starts walking again. Later, on a TV show, Wainwright mentions the incident involving the alien's punishment, but completely omits the miraculous healing of the boy. The host suggests contacting another victim of the aliens. Coretta Jones is a religious girl, whose mother decided to end it all because the overlord destroy her faith. The girl fears that the next generations won't know about God, and the Freedom League uses her story as another argument against the Overlord's rule. Soon, Wainwright orchestrates Ricky's abduction and demands that he join the Freedom League. Ricky refuses, and they are ready to finish him off, but suddenly Corellan stops time and allows Ricky to escape. Later, it's revealed that this kidnapping was broadcast on screens worldwide. Corellan allowed Wainwright's people to abduct Ricky to discredit the Freedom League in the public's eyes, showing that they are willing to use any means. In a meeting with Corellan, Ricky insists that he finally shows his true self to humanity, but Corellan claims that they are not ready to accept his true form yet. We've seen the effect our appearance can have. So then you haven't seen my people. Corellan reveals that they have helped not only Earthlings in its cooperation with the Shaken Ricky. Meanwhile, the news reports that Hugo Wainwright passed away by his own will. This marked the end of the resistance and the first stage of humanity's enslavement by the aliens. Fifteen years have passed. After graduating from university, Milo becomes an astrophysicist. People enjoy the gift of eternal youth and a paradise on Earth but still await the encounter with the overlords, dub them as their guardian angels. Finally, the overlords decide to reveal themselves to humanity. A gigantic ship of the overlords appears in the sky, and hundreds of thousands of spectators eagerly await the with their benefactors. Meanwhile, Jake Gregson's family gathers in front of the screen to not miss the broadcast of this significant event. Two children are sent into the ship to ceremoniously introduce Corellan. Finally, they come out, but Corellan's appearance shocks the people. 
Hello? There is no need to be afraid. Resembling that of a demon, would you change your opinion about the overlords due to Corellan's terrifying appearance, or would you judge only based on their benefactions? Share your thoughts in the comments. The year is now 2035. All of humanity has become a unified nation, living in peace and prosperity without diseases or worries. However, for those who do not accept the overlords new order, there's only one free city left, New Athens. In Africa, Milo works at an institute with his friend Rachel, under the supervision of Dr. Boyce. However, Milo's latest project is shut down, and he is forced to leave his job. Now, Milo wants to focus on studying the overlords, who have revealed very little about themselves and their world to humans in the 19 years. Peretta Jones still doesn't trust the overlords. She studies a lot of literature and comes to the conclusion that Corellan is the devil himself, sending a false prophet in Ricky's form. At night, Ricky's house is once again illuminated by a beam of light, leading him to the barn to meet Corellan. Ricky is surprised by his sudden visit, but Corellan claims he has come to apologize and tell Ricky some truth. The next day, the entire world is agitated by the question of why Corellan returned to Ricky's farm. The African Research Institute of Dr. Boyce is suddenly shaken by mysterious tremors. Rachel goes to the enclosures of the disturbed animals and notices one of the monkeys with unnaturally glowing eyes. The tremors subside, and Dr. Boyce discovers a new room in the institute building. He enters and sees a large glowing Ouija board in the middle of the room, which, according to religious beliefs, is an instrument of Satan. At night, an alien drone flies to Jake Gregson's house and illuminates all the members with a greenish light. The beam stops on Amy's belly, Jake's wife, and at the same moment, the Ouija board activates. Soon, the drone flies away, and a restless Amy starts to have visions. I'll end him again. Suddenly, the parents notice that their son Tommy is missing. Jake finds Tommy in the barn, but the boy has changed significantly and now possesses remarkable strength. After some time, Jake and Amy seek help from psychotherapist Peretta Jones and tell her about their son's strange behavior. In a conversation with Peretta, Tommy reveals that the overlords often take him to a distant mysterious place where he sees a giant eye and the earth on fire. Suddenly, his story is interrupted by a horrifying noise in his head. Tommy rushes around the house and nearly injures Peretta with his strength, distorting her cross. Then he touches his mother's belly and says that the baby has stopped crying, but shocked Amy insists that she is not pregnant. In Africa, Milo and Rachel are concerned about the strange behavior of animals and believe that it's somehow connected to the selection of all Earth species for the overlords. However, Dr. Boyce recommends they don't meddle in Corellan's affairs. Still, Milo and Rachel are determined to find out the truth about the overlords. Why do they look like demons? Like our exact idea of devils. Meanwhile, Ricky begins to experience severe pain in his hand, and in the hospital, he learns that he has cancer and infertility caused by the toxic hull of the spaceship. Ellie hopes that Corellan will definitely help Ricky, considering all he's done for him. Four months later, Jake and Amy learn that they will soon have a daughter. Amy comes up with a name for the baby, and Jake and Tommy play in the yard. Suddenly, Tommy asks his father to call Jennifer, and at the same moment, Amy decides to name the daughter Jennifer. Later, on Corellan's directive, Dr. Boyce offers Jake a job in Africa and invites his whole family to a grand reception. Arriving at the mysterious event, Jake meets Milo, who informs him that Boyce is not hiring anyone else. Jake senses something amiss and suggests Amy leave, but he must find Tommy first. Soon, Dr. Boyce approaches Amy and informs her that Corellan wants to meet her. They bring the frightened woman into a room with the Ouija board and compel Amy to touch it. This is how Corellan awakens Jennifer in the womb. He instills in her that she's not an ordinary human and must embrace her essence. One day, Jennifer will lead the other children and save the planet. Is it done? The next day, Corellan arrives at Ricky's place again and hands him a device that can heal him. Suddenly, Peretta bursts into the barn, having been living near the farm for some time, and accuses Corellan of lying. Corellan confesses that Ricky's infertility is his doing. Ricky doesn't understand what he did to deserve such punishment, but Corellan claims that the absence of children will spare them from immense suffering. A dreadful day is approaching, and those with children will have it much harder. How dare you! Unable to bear Corellan's words, Peretta suddenly grabs a rifle and shoots at him, but Ricky uses his mysterious device to heal Corellan. Dr. Boyce realizes that Corellan plans to take the animals to his planet for a reason. He, like Noah, is building his ark before an impending catastrophe. At night, Peretta sees the ghost of her mother and following it, falls from the balcony. Soon, Amy gives birth to a girl whose eyes emit a horrifying green light. Another four years have passed. Ricky still suffers from unbearable pain. One day, Corellan appears at his house again and explains that the overlords are meant to alter the evolution of humanity. Corellan offers to help Ricky, but he's too angry about his infertility, so he refuses and asks him to leave. Suddenly, all the children of Earth begin to demonstrate advanced psychic abilities and inexplicable mental connection with each other, and, repeating the name Jennifer, raise their hands and look upwards. Milo, who has spent the recent years studying new children, discovers that they have heightened metabolism and brain impulse activity. Furthermore, they possess astonishing perception abilities and talents for telekinesis and telepathy. Milo is convinced that it all began with Jennifer and that she is the key to everything. The Gregson Hunt family sees dozens of children waiting in front of their house, waiting to meet Jennifer. Jake decides to go to New Athens, hoping it will help weaken the Overlord's influence on them. However, soon all the children begin to hear the call of a being called the Overmind, to which they unquestioningly obey.
The Gregson arrive in New Athens, where people continue to live their ordinary lives. The family meets the city's mayor, Jerry Holcroft, who promises to help them. However, even here, children hear the overmind and are ready to follow Jennifer. Soon, Milo contacts Jake and explains that his daughter is a conduit of a force that affects all children in the world. He wants to ask Jennifer a few questions. However, Jennifer terrifies Milo to the core, and in her eyes, the explosion of Earth is reflected. The end begins. Milo realizes that Earth is in danger and decides to secretly journey to the Overlord's planet with another batch of zoo animals. He asks for Rachel's help, but she doesn't want to lose Milo since his journey will take 80 Earth years. However, Rachel eventually helps Milo by inducing him into a state of suspended animation before sending him to the Overlord's planet. Prior to entering his sleep, Milo gives Rachel a pendant with a hieroglyph that signifies love. Meanwhile, Ricky continues to battle his illness. His condition worsens significantly, and the vessels on his body become horribly inflamed. Ricky loses consciousness and once again finds himself in the honeymoon suite, reliving the best moments with Annabelle. Corellin enters the room and offers Ricky the chance to stay there forever with his beloved. However, Ricky bitterly realizes that it's all unreal and asks to destroy the room. With a heavy heart, Ricky returns home and meets his end in Ellie's arms. The Gregson family goes to the cinema and enjoys an old comedy, just like in the past. Suddenly, the screening is interrupted, and Jennifer speaks, saying that the time has come. Corellin's face appears on the screen, addressing humanity for the last time. He announces that the golden age of humanity is coming to an end. Children no longer belong to adults. They will soon shed the remnants of their humanity and begin a new life. From now on, no new children will be born on Earth, and adults can live their lives as they wish. All the children raise their hands again and look upwards, and suddenly Jennifer detaches herself from the ground and takes off. Parents panic and try to stop her, but it's impossible. Soon, other children from all over the world follow Jennifer. Jake and Amy beg Tommy not to leave them, and suddenly he descends to the ground, albeit briefly. Tommy explains that Jennifer allowed him to say goodbye to his parents, but now he must join the other children. Meanwhile, Jerry Holcroft realizes that without children, humanity cannot be saved and decides to destroy New Athens with a nuclear bomb explosion. Jake tries to convince him not to do it, but Jerry is resolute. He hopes that after the end, they will all be able to see their children again. For Jake and Amy, their last moments are spent confessing their love for each other before the devastating explosion. The Overlord spaceship finally gets close to a massive fiery planet, and Milo emerges from suspended animation. One of the Overlords greets Milo and shows him their native planet. Milo also learns that they've been traveling for 40 years, and now he wants to know what happened to Earth during these years. The Overlord claims that everything that happened to Earth was long planned by the Overmind, the creator of everything in the universe. Are you talking about God? The Overlords have been communicating with him for 100,000 years in altering worlds according to his instructions. Now it's Earth's turn. Milo wants to know everything and asks to see the Overmind. He finds himself in a white space and sees a mysterious orange silhouette, which is the Overmind. The so-called God says that only children can evolve into a single consciousness, while the rest of humanity meets its end. Then the orange silhouette transforms into several copies of Rachel and Milo. Upon waking up, he asks to be returned to her. Another 45 years have passed, and the ship approaches the lifeless Earth again. Corellin informs them that they transferred Rachel to the ship and offers Milo to see her. However, Milo only sees Rachel's lifeless body. Suddenly, he takes her pendant, and Rachel's body breaks into many particles. The pendant leaves a burn mark on Milo's hand in the shape of the hieroglyph, Love. Milo realizes he's the last human in the universe and desperately asks Corellin to take him back to Earth as he can't bear such loneliness. Milo also promises to report to the aliens about Earth's final days for the sake of science. We see the scene with which the story began. Milo addresses the overlords and asks them not to forget humanity. Soon, he witnesses Jennifer continuing to draw energy from everywhere, and the ground beneath them starts to crumble. In the final moment, Milo asks to preserve some memento of human culture, and Corellin chooses music from his childhood, under which Milo welcomes the end of Earth's existence. What do we do with it? Leave it here, for whoever passes through, so they can hear it. This was the series Childhood's End. I think it turned out quite complex and multifaceted, and the sad story of humanity's decline didn't leave me indifferent. It's a pity that all of humanity's legacy vanished in an instant, but there's hope that a better life and new possibilities await the children. What would you do if you found yourself the last person in the world? I would probably do what Milo did, return home and face the end on Earth with dignity. Let's discuss this question and the film as a whole in the comments.